Welcome to the Brothers Dim. Okay, let me try. <laughs> Welcome to the Brothers. <laughs> what? Sorry, sorry. Go okay. Do, 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 do. Welcome to the Brothers Dim. This week we're gonna get real and talk about some stuff I'm not hearing out there. No one else is addressing this, and so you know we're just gonna take a risk and do it. But first, did you have like a reflection or something? Reflecting on last week's conversation, at the end, you made a quote from Cowboy Bebop. Do not fear death. Death is always at our side. When we show fear, it jumps at us faster than light. But if we do not show fear, it casts its eye upon us gently and then guides us into infinity. And... That whole episode was about, you know, being non-reactionary, which is sometimes fighting your emotions. No, you can't be fighting them. That's the whole point. You can't be in the fight. You're accepting them. Exactly. We enter fight or flight mode when somebody attacks you personally, is very aggressive, and then you enter that mode of you want to get out of there and your body just goes there, right? You cannot say, stop it, body. If you fight it, like you just said, it only makes it worse. So the combination, it's conquering your fear of death because fight or flight keeps you alive. The way to remain there and not run or fight is to not really be afraid to die. When somebody's personally attacking you, it's kind of the same thing. You, you, your body's entering, it's thinking it's fight or flight, I'm going to die. Well, if that's what it thinks then you can't really be afraid to die and that will help. You know, that's kind of what we're talking about. So I, I don't know. I just thought I could kind of just combine those two things in my head. Yeah. The fear of death might be sort of at the bottom of everything, but I'm not consciously aware of it. Right. Like when I've experienced a lot in the past and it's so frustrating is something will happen. That's not, you know, putting me in immediate danger. Like maybe something happens in politics or you, you're, someone's being really annoying. They believe something that you think is ridiculous. And then I get all upset and there's no fight to be had. And my life's not in danger. I don't need to run away. My body is having this overwhelming feeling of frustration and anger. And then it feels like I've got a fight or flight. But it's just because someone believes something that I don't like. Like it's so counterproductive or it's so pointless i think it's in the same realm like it's definitely not you're gonna die but the reptilian brain kicks in and it triggers the same response in your head so although you're actually not facing a guy with a gun or a bear it's just maybe somebody attacking you or a politics that you don't like the same portion is triggered even though logically and of course you're not in harm's way of death but I think it's in the same reptilian brain that that happens. So I feel like conquering the little ones, not conquering, but working on trying to somehow overcome that the, on the little ones, you know, a, a political thing or somebody attacking you is baby steps towards the big one of I'm afraid to die. It does feel like if you actually conquered your fear of death at some really, really deep level, then all of that stuff that bubbles up to the surface, sort of the nonsensical, stupid reactions you have, those would dissipate if you sort of conquer the one that's down below. Yeah. What I, I think I've heard this from Eckhart Tolle. I, mean, I don't remember if this is him, but a way to sort of step back, because it's so obvious, right, that having those like unreasonable reactions when you're not actually in danger and getting angry is not going to help you. Like, obviously, none of this is good. And you just want to step back. He says to basically remember that, like, you're the witness. So, like, if you're feeling that stuff, you have to sort of put yourself in the mindset of, like, witnessing it. Like, oh, I'm having this fight or flight response. And by doing that, you're removing yourself from the situation, right? Because you are not the fight or flight response. You are now the observer noticing that that's happening to you yeah but that's pretty heady it'd be hard to implement that i i when people describe meditation sort of the beginner's version i've heard it described several ways but it's like 
either you're watching clouds or you're watching cars on a road and those are your thoughts and they pass by and you're just getting in the practice of noticing them and then letting them continue on and trying not to fall into them and get engaged. And then when you do get engaged, you just notice that you're doing it. That helps you back up and just start looking at the stream again. I've been thinking the same thing and I, in my head, relate it to more, instead of seeing people, you're seeing energies because that helps to detach from some real world stuff. Because maybe you're talking to a family member or a coworker or someone that comes with a lot of history. If you look at it as just a form of negative energy, then you get to kind of detach from all the personal involvement of, oh, well, this is my dad. He always does this or whatever. That is a way that helps me detach a little bit that I'm trying to work on more. Yeah, I think that is actually very helpful. But it's interesting because it's so close to people who are literally talking about energy. Like when you get into sort of new agey stuff, it's that spiritual stuff that becomes so... I guess they're attaching a dogma or they're putting like literal concepts in there because the way you're explaining it, you're saying picture this thing happening, right? You're not literally seeing energy. You're, you're conceptualizing this idea uh, yeah. and that's helping you think about the situation in a different way. Exactly. But the person who's literally seeing energy, I have a problem with them or I don't believe them or maybe... They've transcended and they're seeing a part of reality that I can't understand, but I think it's more likely they're full of shit. Yeah, I'm visualizing it. Then sure, maybe I'm kind of seeing it in my head visually so I could describe it to you. But I, I know that's not what you're going to see and that's not real. So, I mean, maybe they are seeing something, but even if I'm visualizing something, I would never really try and describe it to you or, or say, no, this is what it looks like for sure, because I know it's just my perception of it. So when somebody says, no, this is when you get deep enough, you're going to see blues and greens <laughs> and whatever they describe it as. Yeah. Then I'm like, okay, you maybe. I'm not going to say you're not. But if you're telling me that, then I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of dismissive too. Yeah. We talk about not wanting to dismiss things, but there's definitely a lot of stuff in spirituality that I dismiss while also thinking that there's something there. But people just get too hung up on certain ideas and language and they take things so literally that I, I can't take them seriously anymore. Do, 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 do. It feels like sort of a distraction to get into this sort of theoretical spiritual space where it's all this stuff that you can't know and so they put really firm, you know, bricks in place. Like maybe the spiritual place has to be sort of foggy, right? Like it's, it's vaguer. Mm -hmm. It's not a stack of bricks that add up to something. I don't know. I see people getting sort of distracted and not talking about actual reality, like things that are actually happening in our world that we can have an effect on or something we should be responding to. And I just see as a full, as a society, so much of this is like literally completely ignored. I don't hear anyone talking about it. So that's why I brought this up and I wanted to, you know, talk and maybe see if we can have some kind of a conversation about it. It's going to be a little bit like, I don't want to offend anyone, but I mean, we're getting into the real shit. Mm. Well, okay. So I have this um, friend, Trevor, who lives a few few blocks away from me. And a few months ago, it was a full moon. And like every night, you know, he, on weekdays, he walks home from work because he just, it's like a mile walk and he has to walk through uh, Golden Gate Park over here. And mm -hmm. he's kind of a big guy. So, he, you know, whatever. He feels like he's safe. So he walks through the park and he comes home. He's been attacked, but he won't fucking explain what happened. And, and his, his, his excuse kept changing. Like, oh, he fell over. Oh, like he, you know, cut his leg running by a rock or something. 
oh, he heard a sound and then he was running and he cut his leg. Mm. But it kind of, I could detect bullshit in his excuses. And like, I sort of got a glimpse, like he's hiding it from me, but it looked like, like a bite mark on his leg. Mm -hmm. And it's like, he wouldn't acknowledge it to me. I let it go. And then a couple weeks ago, there was another full moon. Do you have like the citizen app on your phone? Yeah. So yeah. Like, if you don't know about citizen, it sort of tells you about like local crimes or like police uh, reports and, th and that kind of thing. Yeah. And like literally on the full moon, there's three more attacks in the same park he was walking through. Mm -hmm. These people, they all died. They all had bite marks. And then people are saying like, it's a, like a mountain lion. Like, I don't know what people think it could possibly be. Like, I don't see fucking lions out here in San Francisco. <laughs> no, I don't think so. It's not a coyote. Coyotes aren't fucking no. killing people. The zoo didn't have a, a break. <laughs> no, like that didn't happen. And so I see that these three people die and no one acknowledges it. They're talking about other shit, like recalling the school board, recalling our district attorney. Like they're all kind of stuck up in these politics and they're ignoring what is obviously actually happening. And I kind of feel like a crazy person when I'm the only one noticing it. Well, and that's the danger of talking around these terms and this kind of hyper PC culture that we're in. Because first off, I don't want to you know trivialize your friend and make this seem like, oh, whatever, this stuff happens. But I knew what you were talking about probably within the first, you know, 10 seconds of you describing it. Well, now we have to talk, you know, an extra amount of time and beat around the bush and it takes away from solving the problem. It'll take us 30 minutes, an hour to just, just, just say, hey, this is what happened. It's a werewolf. I don't know. It didn't used to be. Like, people used to talk about it. Like, they actually used to address the situation. And I don't know what changed, but, like, in the last decade, everyone stopped talking about it. Well, first off, what, what happened to your friend? Trevor is still going to work, sort of acting like nothing's happening he uh, apparently has been working out a lot his uh muscle growth is so obvious that like i can tell it from, you know just seeing him out there on the street and by the way i have to see him on the street because he doesn't want to hang out anymore right he won't go out to dinner he won't do anything anymore like he's sort of isolating himself like he doesn't want to be around people to me, it's kind of obvious, well, maybe it sounds insensitive, but just to, to call it out just head on, you deflate the situation, you know, when, when there's an elephant in the room and there's all this tension and you know that those situations and somebody cuts a joke or they just go, look, this guy, you know, look, he pissed his pants or whatever he did, call it out and immediately there's a sigh of relief and it's kind of like, great, now we can move on. It feels like we're past that because I feel like since no one else will address it, I basically can't say anything or that would put my life in danger because there's nothing in our system that's set up to protect me, right? The police aren't going to do anything. You know, who knows what kind of phobia they're going to put on me. And, you know, I don't own a gun. You don't own silver bullets either. And, and I'm just not comfortable using violence like i can't take that on myself you don't want to make the decision i mean not many people have to but uh trevor did so it sounds like three people are dead that potentially could have been spared if we weren't afraid to talk about the issue head on right so now your friend it sounds like he killed three people and now everyone let's just go about it this is that's the crazy part is once it's the norm it's kind of like in Batman, like when the Joker is saying, if it's all part of the plan, nobody freaks out. Even if the plan is horrifying. If tomorrow I tell the press that like a gangbanger will get shot or a truckload of soldiers will be blowing up, nobody panics because it's all 
part of the plan. If it's a werewolf, it was expected. And I really, that it, I'm idealistic, but I really hate that concept. My instinct is to sort of go up the power hierarchy and start to blame people like politicians, people in charge of media, like the big media corporations who, you know, sort of cast a spell. They basically are casting a spell on everyone and controlling the narrative. Mm -hmm. And so they can sort of direct it away from actual issues, just, you know, with made up stuff that doesn't matter. I, I, my tendency is to kind of do the same thing. You know, we're in, we're operating under the constructs of our society, of our government who runs it. This one gets more difficult because, well, I mean, the first, it was 1136 years ago where the, what was his name? God, Gregon? Gregor. Gregor. That was the first documented case that he bit somebody and they turned and then the rest is history, so to speak. So it's like not like you can blame the government on the issue, but now they're in control of handling this issue that they inherited. So it's I don't want to just absolve them. Well, hey, they didn't start it. Gregor did. But guess whose you know, responsibility it is to keep their citizens safe and to kind of get a hold on it. Not to ignore it and to whatever, make it all taboo and PC and make it so you can't really talk about it. I mean, it's okay. So it's so obviously intentional because this stuff is so obvious, right? They're erasing this, these parts of history and then it just, it works. But I'm trying to imagine who's at work here. And I really can't imagine it's werewolves. Their executive function is not particularly impressive right they can't construct systems to control everyone they're fucking animals they can't put that big puzzle together and so my theory is that they are not involved in the cover-up and there is something else going on right something some other layer someone with more someone who can really play the chess game werewolves can't play chess You'd think I would have heard that, you know, a million times before, but people don't want to say that. The reality is there's a full moon, a werewolf enlarges its body composition to double its size. You literally change your appearance. The way you walk is on all fours. Hair sprouts out of your body all over. They're unrecognizable and they're foaming at the mouth. Yeah, let's let them formulate a, a system, right? Well, they're obviously not, right? I don't think they could even use a phone. They can't. Pause. They have pause. It's so obvious. I just wish more people would say it. Here's a good example. It's the insensitivity thing. I'm a property manager, and I've had this happen to me multiple times where a tenant will, you know, I'll maybe say something brash about it or somebody else, and they play the sympathy card and say, you know, that's very insensitive and blah, 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 and they kind of blame you and say, come on. And then I'll talk to the same tenants a couple months later, and they took a stroll, and it was a full moon, and one followed them, and it got close, and then they're, we got to do something. We got to solve this issue. Yeah, they don't really get it until you're affected. I've been affected, and I don't know how much of the population hasn't had a, an interaction with one, but it's pretty high. Let's say a third have dealt with it personally and a third or and two thirds haven't. But they know someone who has. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't think of anyone who at least through a friend or something hasn't had a, a personal involvement with it. Someone's like banging on the wall here. I don't know what's happening. Is it a full moon? No, it's it, we're recording during the middle of the day. So I don't know what that would be ironic. <laughs> God, don't scare me. OK, well, look, I um. I don't want to get too conspiratorial, so I'm not. I guess I'm not going to start thinking about how this is all connected and who to blame, because it's all just going to be theoretical, and you know we honestly don't know what's going on higher up. So I, maybe let's try to think about what we can just do practically to keep ourselves safe, and then maybe we can think about what what can we do to just in our local area, influence the conversation? Like, how, how do we open this up so people will feel safe talking about it again? But I guess first, let's just talk practical safety. Yeah. 
it's like, well, I feel some werewolves are afraid to say so and some are very outright with it. You know, you kind of have both sides of the spectrums where, hey, I'm a werewolf, you know, which I gravitate toward that type of werewolf as opposed to the one that's more like, like we talked about earlier, like don't acknowledge it. Well, obviously the one who won't acknowledge it is more dangerous. Yeah. Like I know some people who acknowledge it, you know, will chain themselves up on the full moon to try to keep others safe. I don't always trust that they're doing that, but if they're not even acknowledging it, they are not taking the safety precautions to keep others safe. Like your friend Trevor, you know, he killed three people. You know, this is your friend, your buddy, Trevor. Yeah. How do I bring that up? Like, I, 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 I can't. What do you have you? I mean, what do you say to him? You said you weren't really hanging out. You know, a few questions and I'll let you kind of go into it. But are you scared? You know, that you, you know, you could be wrong place, wrong time. He's your buddy. And what do you think about the, the three people that died? Again, like it's acceptable. I guess it's fine. But they maybe had families. So your friend Trevor killed three people. He's your buddy. This is a personal ask for you, but maybe other people in the situation will gain something from it. I mean, I'm kind of stuck because basically I don't have full information Mm. because he's not open about it. So I I don't know exactly what happened, right? Those three people that died, I'm operating under the assumption that, you know, he might be involved. But obviously there's another werewolf around who attacked him. So something else could have happened. I don't... It just seemed to be happening around him, but I don't want to make that assumption Mm -hmm. that I don't want to accuse him because I am afraid for my safety because I'm all alone. When society is not there to back me up, I I kind of Mm -hmm. feel disempowered. Like, yeah, I just don't feel like I can do anything. Well, it's not, and this is generally agreed upon, it's not his fault. No, it's not his fault that he got attacked. And it's not his fault... Well, what? That, he, that really he killed these people. We're, I'm, all I'm trying to say is... I think it is because you can... If I think the responsible thing to do is acknowledge it, be open, chain yourself up on full moons, like lock yourself in some place you cannot escape, right? Like you can take responsible steps, but so many of these people don't acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. They don't want to look at it, right? It's one of these things they just don't want to look at it. We're not going to, you know, put werewolves in jail, and we're not going to round him up and shoot him or something. So it's, yeah, I mean, it's not that they're, they shouldn't be, you know, they're not afraid for the repercussions. So if you said, hey, you killed these three, even if he says yes, nothing's going to happen to him as far as, you know, we've at least come to a place societally where, you know, we're not going to uh, criminalize something that's out of their control. So he's safe. But should we, and I don't know if this is polarizing, somehow make it uh, in in law that they have to take certain precautions? It's been talked about, and it's like on a loop every couple of years or every year, um, should chains be mandatory? Mandatory chains, and nobody wants to dive deeper. Nobody wa- it's, it's also hard to enforce, but nobody wants to be the politician on the on that side since the deaths that they cause are acceptable, but chaining them up is not, you know, that's just where we are at societally. I just remember when we, you know, when I was a kid, that was, like you said, in the conversation every few years, you would hear people talking about it, but that's happening less and less, right? Like, I don't remember the last time I heard anyone bringing this up in actual politics. It's just so funny. Like they want it to kind of go away or nobody wants to deal with it. And they're going to live a lot longer. Everyone guesses beyond us. You know, they'll have longevity. They don't really die. Yeah, well, we we can sit here and not talk about it. But you think think a problem that lasts forever for sure would be more talked about how we can make it better. But for some reason, because it lasts forever, nobody wants to change the laws or implement new th- ideas because it's permanent and forever so here's the deal my girlfriend is she's a werewolf I, you know that i guess i guess the audience doesn't know that i don't care and she's very out there and she's very open and she honestly could be a good voice for any sort of uh, movement she 
and I do this myself. She has chains and we chain her up, you know, every full moon and they're only once has one broken and there's a lot to go with it, but like they're expensive. And if they break and they're very heavy and it, you know, it, no, I'm not making excuses, but she's a responsible werewolf. And I don't honestly know if I'd be with her if she was one that said, eh, chains, whatever. Cause I'm like, yeah, but people die. Eh, well, I don't feel like it. Well, to each their own, but mm, I wouldn't feel comfortable, you know, being in a very personal relationship with one that wasn't careful about that. Has she talked about why she doesn't speak up or, or other, um, if she knows other werewolves, like why they won't, I, I guess they don't have to because we're not doing anything and society is no longer acknowledging it. There's nothing forcing them to come forward. They don't have to start the conversation. It sort of feels like mm -hmm. humans have to do it. Yeah. Well, first off, she's going to kill me if I don't say this. She has a YouTube channel. Where is Sally? And where is spelt like werewolf, not where. And so she does have a voice and she, I don't want to make this too personal about what she does, but she brings on werewolves, the ones that want to talk. And yeah, as far as the ones that don't, it's like you said, they don't have to like we can talk about it non-werewolves and okay but i i just it's so obvious to us that it's more powerful if a werewolf uses their you know platform and talks about it and opens uh, uh op just opens up that realm of communication so so she's doing her part i guess sort of but like she has less than a thousand subscribers and like i've seen her videos they get like a couple hundred views and that's it and like yeah. she she has submitted it to Reddit and it just immediately gets removed from by the moderators. And I can't fucking get past all of the rules on Reddit. Like I don't understand why because it's not in the rules that you can't talk about being a werewolf. But for some reason, her videos are immediately removed. So it's like people are just not allowing the conversation to happen. It's such a joke, man. I'm so glad you brought that up. It's so corrupt. There are no rules specifically against it. And it just feels like a moderator of Reddit, similar to this corruption in government, it just comes down to their preference. And as a collective or whatever, maybe the moderators that she comes across just decide, nope, I don't really like werewolf stuff. Sorry. And no, great. Now the world, uh, you know, it doesn't get to affect more people. I mean, Reddit's a specific, a specific example, but it could be such a good platform to raise awareness. And I'm not just saying this because it's Sally. It's just a problem if then there's no specific one to blame, but just collectively, it's kind of like, no, we don't want that to be in the zeitgeist. So sorry, nip it in the bud. And I, I get so frustrated for her. The rules mean nothing. It's, it's like corruption on the Reddit level. But you have to change the culture because there's not just one person sort of behind the scenes pulling the strings. Like we're doing it to ourselves. Like I'm just thinking now, like something that would actually have an impact is if we had like a legitimate werewolf movie that was actually good and sort of hit pop culture, like got that back into the conversation. There's fucking Walking Dead has been on for 11 seasons. People are always talking about zombies. Like there's always vampire shit happening, mm -hmm. ghost movies. Yeah. Like I see all of the supernatural stuff. No one is doing a werewolf movie anymore. And some people will say, oh, what about Van Helsing? It has to be a good one, though. It has to, to get through. Like we're talking about The Matrix. Like that movie broke through and it spoke to so many people. A movie that's not successful is just like her YouTube channel that doesn't get enough subscribers, mm. right? It's the same, like it has to break through that threshold and get into the zeitgeist. Yeah. You're talking about changing the culture. Well, how does culture change? By pop culture icons, are, are, they're a big factor. Like we can all talk about it, but Michael Jordan, werewolf, he's got much more of a voice than... <laughs> fucking anybody uh elijah wood you want to name some of your name some of your favorite werewolves that are not i would say out but there's only like two or three or whatever. there's not a lot how about the unouted werewolves i don't i feel like that can get you taken off of 
YouTube or uh, like off of social media. It's like dead naming. Like there's these things you can't do anymore. Yeah, they're not out, but everyone knows. I guess I kind of care less at this point of, you know, saying stuff. It gets me in trouble. I'm just kind of over it. Like I thought Benicio Del Toro was a werewolf, but he's not. So did I. <laughs> so did I. Well, you can't judge the way they look. Like he looks like one. Yeah. But that that's not, you know, that's not how it happens. It could be anybody. True. I guess that's just prejudice. But it's not like, okay, big deal. We both thought he was a werewolf and he kind of sounds like one. But it's so crazy because it breaks through so many boundaries, right? Like you can literally be any race. Like it doesn't matter what your gender is. None, none of that matters. Like anyone, mm-hmm. right? So like we're not isolating any group of people. It's just... The people who aren't people. God, yeah, like there's sometimes just, I don't know why people don't lean on the facts. Like if you're debating, there's a, um, a census for werewolves. So we have a good idea of where, where they are. And do you like, for example, do you know where um, I think it was? It's definitely the majority. I forget by how much werewolves live in this one city in mass more so than any other city. And do you know which one it even is? Ah. Uh. Is it in Colorado? Close. It's Bend, Oregon. I guess that makes sense. I mean, yeah. There's a lot of full moons there. That's interesting. Werewolves. Let's see. I'm just reading them off the computer of some interesting ones. The day before the full moon, werewolves drink minimum seven gallons of milk. What about the people that choose to get bit or you know they go out on purpose in, oh. in the areas does it take away from their cause like oh it could it's a good thing and i'm not saying and that's tough again because i'm not saying it's a bad thing but are we normalizing like well, what if i go get bit you know maybe i'll go out there and i want to see and like dip my toes in but you shouldn't tip your toes into something like this if you don't have enough working against you like if you're not enough of a victim today this is something you can do and then it makes you special, right? Like it makes you different and it takes you out of the normal human population. It's so surface level. They're not thinking, oh, well, I'm also going to be alive for 800 years. I'm going to see the oceans rise. Hmm, that sounds fun. But except for when you talk to actual werewolves, that longevity of life is maddening. When you don't die, like people for, for your death we talked about earlier, but hey, when you're alive for fucking eight normal people's lifetimes your brain does something it sucks because there's so much potential here if you were going to live for 800 years then climate change is really important right like we got to take this this seriously and not just worry about well if i'll be dead in the next 50 years and i just got to make sure the world doesn't explode before i die yeah but if you're going to live 800 years well, you've got to make some long-term plans. But these fucking, these people, I, I just wish that it affected their brains in a more positive way. Like, they're not thinking ahead. We don't really have many uh, werewolves that are prominent politicians. Do you think that would change the zeitgeist at all? If there was, let's say, a senator, even a, the president, if you can imagine, or they have the legal right to do so, but they seem to... I don't know what it is, not want to be in the spotlight for that long. They're playing a different power game. I mean, thank God they're not interested in, you know, controlling the general population. I mean, that, that you know, was one of the things I was talking about earlier. Like, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand who has control of the conversation because I don't, it's not them. Like I know they, they're not concerned with that. Like they're, they're not trying to influence things on a grand scale. They're much more concerned just with immediate things that are happening around them. Right. Like they hunt in their immediate vicinity. Like they, they don't, they're not thinking big. I wonder if that happens when they turn, you know, your brain changes a little bit. You obviously are still the person you always were. And there's not a ton of research about this, which I find odd. But like little things change and maybe one of the things that change is you become less uh, interested in influencing the world. Like when you're a human, you care about the human world and the human things. And then when you're not, you just don't care as much. And thinking about it this long, you're like people don't really talk this long about a topic like this. 
you have a werewolf, the full moon comes and their brain turns into mush and they explode, you know, physically with tons of muscles. Then they have a, a different type of vision where they're seeing basically like as far as they describe it, like a heat type of vision. They find anything, you know, with fear in their eyes. They bound over to it, attack it, and sometimes just a bite, sometimes a nibble. And sometimes they'll scratch their eyes out with their paws. I mean, just some normal tactics. They will chew through the neck to the, the jugular and crush it. And for no reason, sometimes they're like playing with the insides. And these are, you know, human beings. And like, then they go back home and they're bloody. And But this is after the moon goes down. And then it's like back to normal. You're talking about them targeting people with fear in their eyes. Mm -hmm. And we just were talking about like the non-reaction, right? Like if you're walking, you know, it's the middle of the night, you're walking down the street, a werewolf pops up, he sees you. If you're afraid, that's looking death in the eyes and overreacting and it's going to get you. Mm -hmm. But like we said, you stand tall, you accept it. I, I feel like they're seeing into you, right? Like they're seeing into your eyes and they're seeing something deep inside of you, right? So it's not just your body, right? It's not just that you're acting afraid and you're waving your arms and screaming, or whatever, right? right? Like they can see through that. So you actually have to be calm inside. There'd be a lot to learn from that. It's just kind of a shame. I mean, my girlfriend gets pissed or not pissed, but she gets so annoyed because, uh, you know, a night after a hunt and I'll say, how do you see the fear? Like, I don't understand. And she goes, look, I forget. Like that goes away. You know, I can't, it's like trying to describe a fantasy dream. It, I don't know. And she tells me that I'm like, I push pretty hard because it's, there could be something to learn for humanity from that. But there's like, we talk about our minds not holding information, you know, because we're stupid. It's that on an extreme scale where that really doesn't hold, you know, what happened that night. Sometimes she still has blood on her face. It's just please understand my perspective of you just, you know, ate somebody's heart and please understand that it might be a little odd for me too. Not that there's anything wrong with it. We should call Tr Trevor. Or we like we've never done this, but like I guess Sally. But we like if we interviewed somebody, you know, Trevor and, or any werewolf. This would I feel like could be a good episode where we branch out and, and try something like that. Yeah, and and assure that we'll never get an audience. Because like that, that will put you at the bottom of the algorithm. That's so sad. I don't want to say it. We'll go into the negatives. All right. Well, we'll leave this behind for now. And uh, we'll try to get back to sort of more acceptable topics next time. Yeah. Yeah. Again, if you, if you have any suggestions for nutritious candy, like especially things on this subject, like, you know, we've seen like the big werewolf movies and they're just not very good. Well, especially not in the last couple of decades. Um, but if you've got an idea, send it to us at the dim brothers at gmail.com. I mean, I, well, I feel good you know, shedding some light or just getting it out there. It's not talked about. Nobody cares. But, you know, we're doing this for ourselves anyway. So we always say, you know, as long as it's helpful to us, we're growing. I guess I think about it a little bit, but I'm never in a conversation about it. Like we're never having a dialogue about it. And so this is kind of unique and it's making me think about it in a new way, right? It's not, it's not all trapped in my head. At least I can talk to you about it and come to some new thoughts or new conclusions. Um, all right. Well, uh, we'll talk again next week. I'm, you know, maybe we'll talk about this again some other time, but like I'm 70% sure there is a ghost in my bathtub. That would be an interesting one too, ghost in the bathtub. Well, I, I, I mean, I guess I don't know if it's a ghost or, or a ghoul or what it is. Dude.